In this chapter, we'll see how we can make use of automatic module detection using required JS. So we'll be making use of required JS library to load our view module and templates. Templates will be defined in an external HTML file and from there, we'll be loading it in our knockout application. So let's start with required JS first. Required JS is a library that is used for automatic module detection and loading of JavaScript modules and references. It was developed by James Burke from Mozilla and it's an open source project hosted on GitHub with a vibrant community that helps maintain it. Now, we'll see how we can install required JS first of all by making use of NuGet package manager in Visual Studio. You can also install required JS by running this command install package required JS and we'll be also making use of required JS text library which you can install either from NuGet package manager if you are using Visual Studio or you can simply go ahead to this URL github.com slash requirejs slash text and download the repo from there and make use of the text file. So first of all, let's see how we can install requirejs using NuGet package manager. So in Visual Studio, you'll be presented with this screen that's called manage NuGet packages. So you can download these two. I've already downloaded it. You can see text plugin for requirejs and requirejs and once downloaded, they will be inside your scripts directory. So here you can see the required JS and the text JS. To access NuGet Package Manager, all you need to do is just click on this link, Manage NuGet Packages, and it will bring up that screen which you just now saw. Now, if you have to download the text script manually, you can just visit the URL which I just showed you. And once downloaded, you can see the text.js file as this, and you can directly make use of it in your application. Now, let's see how we can make use of required JS to load our view model and template. So first of all, you can see the same component that we are making use of. The other thing that we have to do is create a configuration file and make use of the required.js file. So the configuration file will look something like this. Here you can see that I've created a global variable require and the base URL is components because we have the whole project inside a component directory. Then we are specifying paths, paths for the libraries which we are making use of. So you can see that we have jQuery, knockout and text. So jQuery, and you can see that we don't need to specify the .js extension, just the path. So jQuery script slash the name of the file without the extension. Similarly for knockout and text. So once you have defined these paths, just include it in your file like this. And after that, require JS file will be called. Here you will notice that data main scripts loader attribute is there. So as soon as the require JS file gets called, it will automatically call a particular file. And that file in this case is script slash loader.js. So we have the loader.js file coming up over here. Now let's see what this file does. So all we are doing over here is we are making use of jQuery and knockout. So for jQuery, you're passing the dollar symbol and for knockout, we have the KO. And here we are registering our component. And you'll notice that earlier when we were registering it, we were mentioning two things, the view model and the template. Here we are just saying get the view model and template from this location. So we are saying require script slash user signup. So user signup is another JS file that we have. And you can see the ko.apply bindings is also taking place here without specifying any view model inside it. So let's go and check what the user signup.js file is having. So inside user signup.js, you can see that we are making use of the knockout and text library. For text, we are saying get this particular file that is user signup.html. Since it's residing in the components directory, here, that's why we have this path mentioned. And then inside the function that we have, we are passing two things, the KO, that is knockout object from here, and then this file that we have got just now, so as user signup template. And this is the function that we had earlier in our previous version also, where we had this app.js file thing explained. So you can see that same function. We are making use of this function over here in our user signup.js. So once that is done, we are passing this user signup as a view model and this user signup template over here and that's all. So let's save this and understand how exactly the whole process is working. 
So whenever we load a view model or template via required declaration, all knockout does is call this, that is the path that we have given and a callback function. So whenever we load a view model or template via required declarations, all knockout does is call the particular module name or the template file and a callback function and uses the asynchronously returned objects as the view model and template definitions. So basically, this does not take a strict dependency on required JS. We can make use of other loaders as well. Knockout does not interpret the module name in any way. It merely passes it through the require. So of course, Knockout does not know or care about where your module files are loaded from. That's up to your loader and how you have configured it. Knockout does not know or care whether your AMD modules are anonymous or not and AMD modules are loaded only on demand. That is, Knockout does not call the require module name until your component is being instantiated. This is how components get loaded on demand, not upfront. So that's how automatic module detection works. Now let's see when we execute this file amd.htm, what happens? So in browser, let's check it out. There you go, you can see the user sign up coming up and let's change the last name as well over here. And you can see that it's working pretty fine. We have our template coming from an external HTML file that is user sign up.htm. This is the place from where that particular template is being loaded and we have our module defined here so that way we can make use of AMD to load our view model and templates.